Hello, I'm back. Thanks for all the great feedback on the last episode of Fearsome Fanfics. Apparently, some of you quite liked it, so we'll give it another go today. We'll see how we get on. Once again, I haven't read this fanfic properly. I've just had a little peek just to see if it's bad enough to make it worthy. I think it is. So let's go straight into it. This one's called The True Man Behind the Mask by Eric's Fallen Angel. Okay, you sitting comfortably? Then I will begin. Chapter 1. Down once more. Eric, we need to get down to your lair. Raoul will be looking for me. Eric quickly picked Christine up in his arms and began to walk faster. They began to hear the mob. H-E-R-E. Hear the mob of people chanting, Track down this murderer. He must be found. The sound of the anger in their voices frightened Christine. She didn't want to think of what would happen if they caught her one and only love. Huh? When Eric made it to the gondola, he laid Christine in the down in the boat. When Eric made it to the gondola, he laid Christine in the down in the boat and stepped in than he began to row frantically. When they reached the lair, Christine stepped out of the boat and walked up the cobblestone walkway and stopped next to the desk that was littered with sketches of ballet girls and said, Eric, I'm frightened. What are we going to do? They're coming down to find you. And if they do, they will take you away from me forever. Christine began to sob historically when, full stop. When Eric reached Christine, he held her in his arms and said, full stop. Christine, they can't keep me away from you forever. Eric pushed her back and said, I must go, I'll come back for you wherever you are. But Eric, Christine tried to object, but Eric interrupted her. I have to go, Christine. I love you. He gave her a kiss and broke the mirror that led out of the opera house to the streets of Paris. As Christine watched Eric disappear into the darkness, Raoul walked up behind her and grabbed her arm and began to carry her off. Christine tried to resist. Christine, what's wrong? We need to go before he comes back for you. Christine willfully went with him. As they waded through the canals of Eric's lair, Christine began to sob. Raoul didn't stop to comfort her, he just kept pulling her through the murky water. Jerk. All of a sudden, Christine's body went limp and she clasped and began huh? She clasped and began to sink underwater. The force of her falling body pulled Raoul down with her. Raoul quickly pulled Christine out of the water and sat her on the rocky shore. He saw that she wasn't breathing, so he pulled his knife out of the sheath and cut her corset open. As soon he cut the corset, she began to gasp for breath. Christine, Christine, are you all right? Raoul bent over and held Christine in his arms until she caught her breath. Christine was so drained she couldn't walk, so he picked her up in his arms and began wading through the canals again toward Christine's dressing room. I think she means toward. She spelt it toward. T-O-U-R-E-D. He laid her upon the Victorian couch. And it's in Paris. It's not, not Victorian times in Paris because that's Queen Victoria of England. Unless she bought it from England, of course. He laid her on the Victorian couch and covered her up with his dress coat. Then he quickly ran out of the dressing room and down the grand staircase and out the huge opera doors and called for his carriage. When Raoul reached the dressing room, he carried Christine down to the carriage once more. Take us home. <laughs> Take yous home, it says. Yes, sir, the carriage driver answered. As they were driving to Raoul's home, Christine began to turn pale, P-A-I-L, and shiver. Raoul held her close in his arms to warm her up. Raoul began to try to wake her up with no success. When the carriage stopped in front of the huge Victorian-style house, Raoul picked Christine up and carried her up to his room and covered her up with the down converter don't know what that means. and ran downstairs to get his housekeeper Rose to watch Christine while he went to get the doctor. Raoul ran down the dark street into the doctor's residence. He pounded on the door over and over again. Miss here, Miss here, it says. When the doctor finally opened, Raoul saw a man standing in his night dressing cap. Raoul couldn't see his face and began to say, Miss here, I need you to quickly come with me, please. I beg you, good sir, I desperately need your assistance. The odd man standing at the entrance raised the candle, C-I-N-D-E-L, pardon me, to see the man begging him and said, I can't, you need to make an appointment. 
As the man began to shut the door, Ral stopped him and said, Sir, whatever you want, I'll get it for you. I just need your help, please. The man looked into Raoul's desperate eyes and sighed. Miss here, I'll be out in a minuet. <laughs> so he had a little dance first. Okay. Oh, gosh. When the doctor came back, he had a dress coat on with a top hat and his medical bag. When they reached the residence, Raoul swung the door open and ran up the stairs to his room where Christine was sleeping. Rose, you can step out now. Yes, Miss here. The doctor walked in and sat his bag on the foot of the bed. How long has she been like this? Raoul immediately answered. This has only been going on since eight o'clock tonight. The doctor walked over to Christine's bedside. He sat his hand on her forehead and took her pulse. Can you take pulses in the forehead? Not sure. Raoul walked out of the room and began to pace the hallway. All of a sudden, the doctor came out and had a sorrowful look on his face. Raoul stopped in the middle of the hallway and looked the doctor in the eyes and seen that he had bad news. What's wrong, Doctor? <laughs> well, she has pneumonia, spelt N-O-M-O-N-I-A. And, da-da-da, she's pregnant! I don't know if it will hurt the baby, but I believe she's going to be alright as long as she gets enough fluids and rest. She's only a month along, so the baby should be fine. Yeah, because you can really tell by one month that the baby's going to be fine, you know. Thank you, Doctor, thank you. When the doctor left, Ralph sat in a chair in the room that Christine was in. He thought to himself, How can she be pregnant? There is no way this can be possible. Oh, yes, it can. <sighs> Part 2. The Shot of Silence The grandfather clock struck nine, and Christine sat up in the huge bed. She saw two notes sitting in the side table. She grabbed one, and it read, Little Lottie, I need to speak to you as soon as possible. Love you, Ralph. When she finished reading the note, she grabbed the next one. It looked much different than the other. Than the other, this one was unique and beautiful. It read, My loving angel, I am safe. For no, there is nothing you need to worry about. But I am worried about you and our child. So I bought you a position. If you drink this every day for three days, you will start to feel better. Then I will come for you. I think Eric already gave Christine a position, if you know what I mean. When, it, uh, when Christine finished reading the last note, note, Raoul walked in. Christine, you're awake. How are you feeling? Christine paused for a second and responded, Better. I'm just really tired. Well, we can't have you sick with the baby coming now, can we? Christine began to breath harder and glanced over at the window. The what? A baby, Raoul answered in a harsh voice. Christine looked at Raoul's face. She could see the anger in his eyes. Raoul, why are you acting like this? Raoul sighed and put his hands on his head and said, Like what, Christine? Raoul, you're scaring me. I'm scaring you. How the hell do you expect me to act? You're pregnant, and there is no way this could have happened unless you were with some other man. By this time, Raoul was screaming at Christine. Who in the hell is he, Christine? Who? Don't walk away from me. I'm not done with you. Well, I'm done with you, Raoul. You're not the little boy I met at the house by the sea. You're not the man I engaged, and definitely not the man I fell in love with. Raoul grabbed Christine by the arm and threw her on the bed and said, Shut up and sit down. Ooh. Raoul raised his hand, <laughs> slapped Christine across the face. Smack my bitch up! Smack my bitch up! <laughs> um, suddenly, Philip walked in. I guess I mean Philippe. We'll call him Philip. Philip ran in and grabbed Raoul's arms and threw him to the ground. <laughs> Shall I throw him to the floor? Oh yes, throw him to the floor. <laughs> Um, yes, so Philip has throw him to the ground. What the hell are you doing? If I ever see you raise a hand to her or any women again, I will break both your arms. Philip walked over to Christine. Are you all right? Christine nodded and stood up and pressed herself against his chest and began to cry. Philip held Christine in his arms and told her that everything was going to be all right. Since when was Philip, Philip and Christine a thing? Suddenly, through the silence, they heard two clicks. Philip pushed Christine out of the room and she fell on the hallway floor and watched Philip fall to the floor with his hands preset to one side of his stomach. Christine watched Ralph stand over his brother and cock back the hammer of the revolver again and aim it at Philip one last time. Christine stood up and ran at Ralph. She grabbed the revolver and Ralph pulled the trigger. The gun went off and everything was silent. Ooh, drama. 
Palmer. You know, I've actually got to see what happens next. Did Philippe die? Did Christine die? Did Ralph shoot himself in the nuts, Frederick Forsyth style? Shall we find out?